Politics is a numbers game. The three important numbers are, number one, the number of votes, number two, the five-year term before the next election, and number three, the money that can be made in between. So the biggest concern of a typical politician is how he is going to get enough votes to get into the office for the first five years, what must he do to get another term, and how he can make money in the process. After all, most politicians have no other source of income other than playing politics. In fact, politics is almost the only field where school dropouts and criminals can make it big. This makes politicians ineffective decision makers because their primary consideration is the number of votes that can be gained or lost by taking a particular direction. That is why Soweto residents and the likes will never pay for electricity so long as politicians need votes to stay in power. By forcing Sowetans and defaulting municipalities to pay for electricity, which they must, you stand a chance of losing millions of votes while gaining only a few from the frustrated middle class. So dealing with electricity theft in Soweto and other places is not a good political strategy. This is where political logic prevails over economic logic, so long as the next five-year term of looting is secured. This political strategy has been one of the main reasons why politicians defy all economic logic and keep on pouring billions of rands on non-performing SOEs. It's about the votes and the money that can be made in the process. If you applied the law and dealt with electricity defaulters, you stand a chance of gaining 5% of the middle class while losing 95% of the underclass. However, if this system prevails, the collapse is inevitable. There will come a point where 5% will sink under the weight of the 95 the 5% does not only subsidize the 95%, but it also pays an average three times the tariffs they would pay if they were staying in townships. ESCOM has already increased the electricity tariffs by 300% over the past 10 years. They will continue to do so as long as it is politically incorrect to force people like Sowetans to pay their fair share. And as you know, when people get something for free, they tend to abuse it. They have no incentive for using it sparingly since someone else is paying. If you don't believe me, try taking a slate queen out for dinner. That is why Sowetans are some of the biggest users of electricity per household compared to the paying citizens. There are endless stories of how in winter they leave their stoves and their ovens on full blast to warm the house the whole day even if it's unoccupied. While at the same time, the paying few have to devise all tricks to keep warm in winter without tapping much into electricity. Because Sowetans have been able to get away with this, many other townships and municipalities are starting to follow the example. No one wants to pay for something that can be available for free. As pointed out by Rick Joyner, unpunished lawlessness always leads to more lawlessness, and this is a sure path to distraction. As of June 2019, it is estimated that Sowetans and more than 10 municipalities owe ESCOM about 36.5 billion rands. This money will go a long way in chipping off from the 500 billion rands ESCOM did. No amount of tariff increases will get ESCOM to a better financial and operational position so long as this political logic prevails. We already know this because the taxpayers have been funding the bailout of SOEs for the past 20 years, but none of them have turned around. The economic logic says deal with corruption at ESCOM, reduce the bureaucratic burden that is costing billions in salaries, and collect debt owed by Sowetans and municipalities. This is obviously in conflict to the winning political strategy of pacifying the voting majority while crucifying the minority, individuals and businesses that are paying. As Thomas Sowell puts it, in politics, it is worthwhile to kill the goose that lay the golden egg, so long as the effects of this will be felt sometime in the future, where it is someone else who will have to pick up the pieces. The unfortunate part is, as ESCOM sinks, it's taking the whole economy with them. This is the livelihoods and millions of people and their businesses which provides the much-needed jobs. As a report by CSIR shows, in 2019, the load shedding costed the economy between 59 and 118 billion rands. This is the money that business people could have used to expand their operations or start new companies and thus create more jobs. My plea with you is that, if you love this country, take courage voice your dissatisfaction and hold your anger until you're at the voting booth. But above all, 
Pray for this country and take a risk. Make your voice heard. A simple thing as voicing your dissatisfaction and pointing out the evil will open the eyes of many people. It can start by sharing this video.